At the beginning of 2021, the United States Marine Corps announced that they would keep five squadrons of AV-8B Harrier II fighter jets in service until 2029. Why does the Marine Corps want to keep these aging aircraft despite having the F-35B? Before discussing the AV-8B fighter jets, let's first understand what Harrier refers to. Harrier does not refer to a specific type of aircraft, but rather an entire Harrier family. The first generation of Harrier referred to the Hawker Siddeley Harrier fighter jet, and the carrier-based version was called the Sea Harrier. The American version, the AV-8B, is known as the Harrier II, while the British version is called the British Aerospace Harrier II. All these aircraft can be collectively referred to as Harrier. The first generation of Harrier aircraft was born in 1969. During that time, the strategy for aircraft was to destroy runways or create craters on them, rendering all aircraft on the airfield useless. In such a scenario, the only way for aircraft to take off successfully was through vertical takeoff and landing, which led to the development of the Harrier aircraft. The key to achieving vertical takeoff and landing for the Harrier aircraft is the vectored thrust engine, which has four thrust vectoring nozzles. The engine is positioned at the aircraft's center of gravity, and the four nozzles protrude from the sides of the fuselage. When these nozzles generate thrust greater than the aircraft's weight, the aircraft can ascend vertically. Conversely, during landing, the nozzles produce thrust less than the weight of the aircraft. In addition to these four nozzles, the Harrier aircraft has nozzles connected to the wings, nose, and tail, all of which can be controlled to maneuver the aircraft. Soon after, with the advantage of vertical takeoff and landing, the Harrier aircraft became a carrier-based aircraft, known as the Sea Harrier. Up to this point, the advantages of the Harrier aircraft were evident. It could coordinate with ground forces at any time, take off from damaged airfields, and, if necessary, even take off and land on highways or building rooftops. It was easy to camouflage and hide on the ground, resulting in a high survival rate on the battlefield. Thanks to vertical takeoff and landing, the number of carrier-based aircraft on aircraft carriers increased by one-third. Another advantage is that Harrier aircraft can operate between conventional fighter jets and helicopters. It can perform fast cruising, hover in the air, make sharp turns, and even perform high-difficulty maneuvers like backward flight to evade missile attacks. Compared to these advantages, there are also several disadvantages. First and foremost is high fuel consumption. During the vertical takeoff phase, one-third of the total fuel is consumed. As a result, the Harrier does not have long-range capabilities, with a combat radius of only 1,100 kilometers. Secondly, the design of the vectored thrust nozzles for vertical takeoff and landing prevents the installation of an afterburner, and the aircraft relies on a large intake to meet its air demand. The prominent nozzles also increase aerodynamic drag, limiting the Harrier aircraft's maximum cruising speed to subsonic levels. Furthermore, the maximum takeoff weight of the Harrier aircraft is only 14,061 kilograms, and its payload is less than 2,000 kilograms. These figures are inferior to those of conventional fixed-wing aircraft. Additionally, the Pegasus vectored thrust engine has high environmental requirements when operating at full power. If sand and soil are sucked into the engine during takeoff, it can lead to catastrophic engine failure. However, despite these numerous disadvantages, the Harrier aircraft, with its groundbreaking maneuverability and flexible takeoff capabilities, achieved remarkable success during the Falklands War. It shot down 22 Argentine aircraft of various types. In 1970, the United States purchased 12 Harrier aircraft from the United Kingdom for $57.6 million and renamed them AV-8A. The AV-8A variant added the ability to launch Sidewinder missiles and was equipped with the Pegasus 102 and Pegasus 103 engines based on the original Sea Harrier design. However, this model belongs to the experimental type and has not entered the service or combat stages. As mentioned earlier, the major highlight of the Harrier aircraft is its convenience for takeoff and landing. 
However, during the vertical takeoff process, it consumes a significant amount of fuel, limiting its range. Additionally, its takeoff weight is relatively small, preventing it from carrying a large payload of weapons and fuel. It's worth noting that at that time, the U.S. Navy's A-4 Skyhawk could carry a payload weighing up to 6,300 kilograms, almost four times that of the Harrier. To address these issues, McDonnell Douglas Corporation conducted modifications on multiple AV-8A aircraft between 1973 and 1976. The modifications included replacing the engine with the Pegasus 11 to 21 thrust vectoring turbofan engine, installing a new wing, intake duct, vertical takeoff nozzles, and other improvements in aerodynamics. Even the fuselage underwent basic aerodynamic improvements. The model designation was changed to AV-8B. In 1979, McDonnell Douglas successfully secured a production contract for 336 AV-8B aircraft. From 1969 to 2003, McDonnell Douglas delivered a total of 824 Harrier fighter jets in different variants. As of now, the AV-8B is still undergoing various levels of upgrade and modification. These include the installation of a digital control system, reinforced leading edge intake to prevent bird strikes, additional auxiliary air inlets, increased overall fuel capacity, and a retractable aerial refueling probe. Especially in the 1990s, the U.S. military equipped the AV-8B with a forward-looking infrared system and the APG-65 Pulse Doppler radar from the F-A-18 Hornet. Compared to previous upgrades, this was a significant improvement, and the upgraded model was designated as the Harrier 2 Plus. Currently, the majority of active-duty U.S. Marine Corps Harriers are of this variant. Apart from the inability to achieve supersonic speeds, lack of stealth capabilities, and relatively short range, the Harrier 2 Plus has commendable performance. With its new wing design, the Harrier 2 Plus increased its underwing hardpoints from 4 to 6, with an additional belly weapon pylon capable of launching AIM-120 medium-range air-to-air missiles and AGM-65 Maverick air-to-ground missiles. Pilots are also equipped with a helmet-mounted sight system, Overall, for a significant period of time before the F-35B entered service, the Harrier II was the only operational fighter aircraft with vertical takeoff and landing capabilities. The current variant of this aircraft features a highly precise 6 degree of freedom cockpit, engine digital control system, automatic fuel system, aerial refueling system, power supply system, hydraulic system, flight control system, multifunction color displays, breast computer, environmental control system, onboard oxygen generation system, and other systems with minimal differences from fifth generation aircraft. In terms of weapon systems and defensive capabilities, the AV-8B has an advantage with the N-AQ-28V Lightning Targeting Pod and ALQ-164 Electronic Countermeasures Pod. For close air support, it is equipped with the GAU-12 Equalizer 25mm Gatling Gun Pod. With six underwing hardpoints, it can carry a maximum payload of 4,200 kilograms, including AIM-9 Sidewinder air-to-air -air missiles, AGM-65 Maverick air-to-ground missiles, MK-80 unguided bombs, laser-guided paveway bombs, JDAM, GBU-38, GBU-32, and GBU-54, MK-20 cluster bombs, and more. Its firepower is comparable to that of fourth-generation fighters. The AV-8B's first combat engagement was in Operation Desert Storm, with a total of 86 aircraft deployed, flying a total of 3,342 sorties and accumulating 4,317 flight hours, dropping over 2,700 tons of ordnance. During the conflict, the AV-8B lost a total of five aircraft. Although the loss ratio of 5 to 1 is not as dramatic as the 22 to 0 ratio of the Falklands War, it was still considered excellent compared to contemporary conventional fixed-wing attack aircraft. This decision by the U.S. Marine Corps to delay its retirement can be seen as a testament to its performance. Although the current AV-8B Harrier 2 Plus may not match fourth-generation carrier-based aircraft or the F-35B in terms of capabilities, its unique vertical takeoff and landing characteristics, 
combined with its overall combat capabilities as a fixed-wing aircraft, surpassed those of armed helicopters.